I am so honored to be with Steve Riley. He's a Grammy Award winner. You all know that already. And a founding member of Steve Riley and the Mama's Playboys. Welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. Well, you started in the music business very young. Let's talk about that. I grew up in Mamu, and um, my mom's family is from there. My dad's family is from here in Eunice. And um, so I grew up hearing Cajun music in my grandparents' home, homes on the weekends. I would hear um, in Mamu, um, Cyprian and Adam Langerno would play at house parties for my grandparents in Mamu. And in Eunice, uh, my cousin Mark Savoy and Dennis McGee would play house parties at my grandparents' home in Eunice. So, um, you know, I can remember as early as four years old, three or four years old, hearing uh, Cajun music and um, hearing the accordion. That instrument grabbed me more than any other, maybe because it was the loudest and the most dynamic and most rhythmic of all the instruments. So from a young age, I really loved the sound of the accordion and of Cajun music. And at a young age, too, if you're grabbing the loudest <laughs> instrument, it's also getting the attention of all the adults as well. A little bit? <laughs> I don't, I don't think that had anything to do yeah. with it. <laughs> I think I just liked the instrument, you know. I thought it was cool. And uh, Mark Savoy um, was my favorite accordionist, you know, my hero. And uh, he's a great player, and that probably had a lot to do with it. And you went from that, I guess, time period in your life all the way to, it was 1988 when you formed Steve Riley and the Mamou Playboys. And during that era, I mean, that was the hair band rock era. So that really took a lot of courage to kind of say, you know what, I'm going to do something completely different from what everybody else is doing. Tell me about that. Well, um, you know, Cajun music is what I loved. I didn't really care for the pop music of the 80s. Um, in high school, I was listening to the Balfour Brothers and the Savoie Ducey Band while my friends were listening to Foreigner and Toto and, you know, all the 80s stuff. What kind of response did you get from them when you said, hey, I'm, I'm playing the accordion, I'm doing my own gigs, you guys can go listen to that music, but I'm, I'm on stage, I'm performing. Yeah, they would, um, they would make fun of me. Yeah? You know, but uh, I was in a rock band in high school with some friends, and I'd always pull the accordion out and we'd do some Cajun tunes. So they, you know, we met each other halfway, you know, people uh, in Mom would love when we would break out the accordion and play the Mardi Gras song. And, um, you know, on the weekends, I was lucky. I got to travel um, with Dewey Balfa, who I was playing with since age 15. Mm -hmm. So I would travel all over the United States with him when he needed. And, um, you know, my friends were back at home being bag boys at the local grocery store. So <laughs> I definitely had the best of it. Now, how, how was the parents' situation when you were going, hey, I'm, I'm touring, I'm, a lot of gigs are in bars and clubs, and you know, Fred's and Mamu. How did your parents feel about you being so young going into those kind of establishments to perform? Well, when I was a teenager, when I was 17, I actually got a gig at a bar downtown across the street from Fred's. And it lasted for a couple of months. It was great until the ABC board walked in. Whoopsie. And saw <laughs> these teenagers <laughs> playing, and that was the end of that. that yeah. But, you know, in Mamu, everybody knows everybody, and Eunice as well, and this is where I played the most when I was young. And uh, we also played a lot in, in restaurants, in New Lots, which was big when we started in the late 80s, the Playboys. So, it's, uh, it's not a bad scene. It doesn't seem to be. It seems like it's done well for you, kind of branching out and doing your own thing apart from all those 80s rockers. Now, uh, for you, personally, I, I mean, you have traveled and toured all over the place. Has, has there been one particular place that's really kind of stood out for you that, wow, the people here responded so differently or were so open to Cajun music that you wouldn't have expected? So, um... Is there a place outside of Louisiana? Yes. I tell you what, this music gets a great response everywhere we play. Um, a lot of people are just really interested, I find, in Cajun music, Cajun culture. It's just a very unique, exotic thing to people who don't live here. And the music is infectious, and it's energetic. And even though people don't know how to dance, they're on the floor doing it, you know? 
And we do a lot of sit-down concerts as well. And there's just a great story behind the Cajun people, um, you know, the history of our people, the history of the music, what we've had to go through uh, since we left France many years ago. And um, so it's, there's a lot of great stories and a lot of great music. And we'll come back with more great stories with Steve Riley right after this. Welcome back to LA South. We're back with Steve Riley from Steve Riley and the Mummy Playboys Grammy Award winner. Now, you aren't just performing with Steve Riley and the Mummy Playboys. Who else do you perform with? Um, you know, it, we're really lucky down here. There's so many great musicians, and I'm lucky to be in a few other bands with some great musicians. There's another band uh, I'm in that I started with C.C. Adcock and Warren Storm in. Uh, 1995. It's called the Little Band of Gold. It's a swamp pop. They're awesome. Band. I've heard of you guys. And Warren Storm. Oh my goodness. How old is he now? He's 75 and still going strong. Unbelievable. He's a force of nature. The force of nature. And uh, so the, I, I have that group, and also um, the band Cubio, which uh, is a pretty amazing acoustic band. I think a few people have heard about them recently. But, uh, you know, we got together one time and played. The next time we got together was in the studio and we made the record that just won the Grammy. So it's, you know, an amazing story behind that whole. Well, we'll talk a little bit about that collaboration, how that came about from, uh, well, just tell me the story. Well, Wilson and Wayne were hanging out and talking, and Wayne, I think, told Wilson, we should start a band, an acoustic band, and have Steve Riley play in it and call it Cubio. And um, so Wilson put together a, uh, a gig at Cafe Des Amis in Roe Bridge for his birthday. I think it was, it was maybe Wayne's birthday is around the same time. I don't know. But uh, we got together and played, and we were supposed to play from 7 to 9, and we didn't stop till 11.30. Goodness, I want you guys at my birthday party. <laughs> and then the audience does, too. So where did it go from there to all of a sudden, there's the Grammy? Well, Joel was there that night, and he said, look, y'all should really get together and make a record. Just do it at my studio. And the next time we got together was right here. Valco Records. Yeah. And Easiest record, loosest record I've ever made. Yeah. And did you think, because you've been nominated before, this is going to be the one? Because you guys were just kind of playing around having fun. I never said to myself, this will be the one, you know, I just, uh, you just never know. After six nominations, you know, and not winning, you never know. When you heard you were not at the Grammys, where were you? I was at home, getting ready to go to play at Pat's and Chafalaya Club, and Wilson and his band, the Pine Leaf Boys, were playing and we were going to play after them, and uh, I found out I was at home um, upstairs with my son, and um, I was just moved to tears, you know, I just grabbed him and hugged him and told my wife and everybody there, and then we just hugged and celebrated, and it was hard to get out of the house and get to the patch, you know, and um, it was just really emotional. It's as big as it gets in our line of work. Well, everybody at Pat's just had to be, oh, the best crowd ever. It was a great Mardi Gras. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're looking for more Grammy wins with Steve Riley, and we'll be back with a performance up next.
with Mark Mouton of CCA. And what is CCA, Mark? CCA is the Coastal Conservation Association, and uh, uh, it's um, an organization made up of about 12 or 15 of the coastal states, um, and we work to preserve uh, the marine resources and the fisheries in the states in which we operate. Well, we definitely have coastline here in Louisiana. That we do. Now tell me, what's going on with CCA right here? You've got a special event going on. We do. We have our banquet, which is held once a year. It's the Acadiana Banquet, so um, your viewers from St. Landry are certainly welcome and, and any of the other surrounding parishes. Nine parishes. We'll take you. <laughs> and if you're a hunter or a fisherman or an outdoorsman, you've heard of the CCA. We're the guys with the red fish stickers on the back of the cars and, uh, and the trucks that says, join CCA. And at our banquet on the 16th of April, Tuesday, April 16th, you can do just that at the Hyman Center. Now, what is going on at this banquet? Obviously, the Hyman is a really nice place. I'm sure it the is. food is going to be delicious, but what happens at the banquet? Well, obviously, uh, first and foremost, it's a fundraiser for the CCA. We generate um, the majority of our operating funds from our banquets around the state. This is an opportunity to, for you to come out one, to join CCA, to join the STAR Tournament. We'll talk about the STAR Tournament a little bit later on. But it also gives you a chance to bid on things and to buy things um, that you normally you know, probably couldn't get. And this year there's some, there's some unbelievable deals that, are, that they have. I saw last night at our meeting, uh, there's a, a trip to Kona, uh, Hawaii, uh, three days of fishing on a 54-foot boat, and, uh, and the house is included. Ooh, nice. um, and last year it went for about $5,000, which there's no way in the world. It's a lot of money, but you could never ever get a trip like that for that. So uh, we have um, a lot of good auction items. There's a, a trained Labrador retriever, a puppy, and a fur coat as well. So uh, we also have a ladies table, so you might want to come uh -huh. in. So ladies can get that red sticker too. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> now that's a red fish? That, this is a red fish. This is a red this fish. This is a red fish. And, Delicious. Um, <laughs> they, they are, and, and, and plentiful um, now, and not uh, on the endangered species list um, as a result of the work done by the CCA. Now you were talking about after Katrina, and a lot of terrible things happened during Katrina, but the CCA did some really great things. Let's talk about that. We did. Um, through our, our volunteers uh, uh, in the New Orleans area, uh, we call the North Shore and Orleans chapters, uh, we actually were able to take ownership of, um, of the, the twin span bridge that, that collapsed between New Orleans and Slidell. Uh, as a result, um, the cement was recovered, the metal was taken out uh, and brought out into Lake Pontchartrain for a five acre reef. Um, which was a great way to say, yes, yeah, something bad happened uh, as a result of the hurricane, but now we've got a, a living reef um, that will continue to allow people um, to fish for years to come. We've done four of those, I'm sorry, five of those now. We've got one in Big Lake, we have one in Vermilion Bay, and we actually just learned last month we're gonna be building another one in Vermilion Bay. So uh, the fishermen uh, know where it is. It's not gonna be secret, it'll be on all the maps, and hopefully, um, the next generation uh, will be able to enjoy the outdoors as much as we do. And that's just a few examples of what CCA can do and how you can be a part. Sh very much so. We have uh, uh, programs in the 4-H uh, with, with, the, with the kids where we, we talk about wetlands preservation, we talk about resource preservation. Uh, we have crab trap. We talked a little bit about the derelict crab trap program. Once again, if you're a, a boater that uh, and you fish along the coast, you know what happens when you get a crab trap wrapped up in your prop. It's an expensive uh, proposition, no, no pun intended, <laughs> but um, our volunteers go out and I don't know how many hundreds of crab traps they picked up last year. Once again, just uh, enjoying the resource, but also giving back to it as well. Well, Mark, we want everyone to give back by going to this event at the Hyman Center. Tell them one more time your uh, website and how to get in touch. Sure, it's, uh, it's www.ccala.com. You can go to the website. Um, you can get tickets from any CCA member. If you're inclined to get a table of eight, we have tables available. Information is on the website or the Hyman Center the day of the event. We'll have tickets available. And we'll see you there.